Flower Girl. It is said that there was a tribute student in Shaanxi named An Yao. He was generous, loyal and good at releasing animals. If you see a hunter catching a bird or animal, you will often buy it at a high price and let it go. Once, his uncle had a funeral and he went to help, but it was too late when he came back. Passing by Huashan Mountain, I lost my way in a hurry and wandered in a chaotic valley. I couldn't get out, and I was very scared. Suddenly he caught a glimpse of a light flashing a stone's throw away, and quickly ran there. As I was walking, I saw an old man with a hunchback a few steps away, hurried over from the slope on crutches. And Sheng stopped and was about to ask him for directions, but the old man asked him first who he was. And Sheng explained the situation of getting lost, and said that if he saw a light in front of him, it must be a mountain village, and he wanted to stay there. The old man said, that is not a comfortable place. Fortunately, I am here, come with me quickly. You can live in my thatched cottage. And Sheng was very happy. He followed the old man and walked a mile away when he saw a small mountain village. The old man went to a firewood door and knocked on the door. An old woman came out and opened the door and asked, Is the husband here? The old man agreed, and Sheng entered the house and took a look. Sure enough, it was low and damp. The old man lit the oil lamp, asked him to sit down, and asked him to prepare food. The old woman said, Sir, he is our benefactor, not an outsider. The old woman is so weak that she asked the lady to come out and heat the bar. After a while, a girl came out with wine and food. After setting them up, she stood next to the old man, looking at Anqing with a pair of eyes like autumn water. And Shang took a look and saw that the girl was young and pretty. Like a fairy descended from the earth, the old man asked her to boil the wine again. There was a coal stove in the west room, so the girl went in to turn on the coals and boil the wine, and Sheng asked, Who is this of yours? The old man replied, My surname is Zhang, I am over 70 years old, and I have only one daughter, there are no servants in the farmer's family. Because you are not an outsider, you dare to call your wife and daughter out, don't be ridiculous. And Sheng asked again, Where did you marry your husband? The old man replied, You haven't married anyone yet. And Sheng kept praising her for being beautiful and smart. The old man was being humble when he suddenly heard Hua Guzi scream in surprise and hurried over to see. It turned out that the wine was boiling and flames were rising from the lid of the pot. While putting out the fire, the old man reprimanded, You're such a big girl. You don't even know if it's boiling. When he turned around, he saw an unfinished Zigu god with a green grass heart placed beside the stove, and reprimanded again. The braids are so long, they look like children. After saying that, he brought them to Wenxing to see, and said, I was so greedy for braiding that I boiled the wine. You still praise her. Wouldn't you die of embarrassment? And Sheng took it and took a look. The Zigu god had wear upon it with eyebrows, eyes, and a robe. The workmanship was very exquisite. He couldn't help but praise it, even though it looks like a plaything. It also shows a wise heart. He looked at it repeatedly and couldn't put it down. Hua Yuzi came frequently to pour wine, smiling brightly and showing no shyness. And Sheng looked at her very emotionally. It happened that the old woman was calling someone in the kitchen. And the old man responded. And Yayu took the opportunity and said to Hua Yuzi, When I saw the girl's fairy face, I lost my soul. I want to ask a matchmaker to come to your house to arrange marriage, but I'm afraid it won't work. What should I do? Hua Yuzi silently held the wine. The pot was warming the wine on the stove, but he didn't seem to hear anything. I asked several more times, but got no answer. And Sheng moved closer to the west room, and Hua Guzi stood up to hide in a hurry, saying sharply, What did Quang Sheng want to do when he comes in here? And Sheng knelt down and begged. Hua Guzi grabbed the door to leave. But An Cheng suddenly stood up and hugged her tightly. Hua Guzi screamed, her voice trembling. The old man heard the sound and hurried over to ask, and Sheng quickly let go of his hand and exited, looking ashamed and very scared. But Hua Guzi calmly said to her father, The wine has boiled again. If An Lang hadn't come over, the jug would have melted. When An Cheng heard this, he felt relieved and thanked her. He was even more fascinated and forgot how he got there. So she pretended to be drunk and left the banquet. 
and Hua Guzi also went. The old man spread the bedding for him, closed the door and left. And Sheng couldn't sleep, so he got up to say goodbye and go home before dawn, and immediately asked a friend to come and arrange marriage. When my friend came back at dusk, he didn't even find the village, and Sheng didn't believe it, so he asked his servant to prepare his horse and find the way himself. When I arrived at Mount Huashan, I saw that it was full of high mountains and cliffs. Sure enough, the village was nowhere to be seen. I went to inquire about it nearby. Mountain residents say that it is rare to hear of anyone with the surname Zhang. Then he came home listlessly. From then on, and Yayu thought about it day and night, unable to eat or sleep. Soon he suffered from coma and became bedridden. The family cooked porridge to feed him, but they all vomited it out. When he was in a coma, he kept calling for his sister-in-law, and his family members didn't understand what he meant. So they had to guard him day and night until they saw that he was critically ill. One night, the nurse was really sleepy and fell asleep, and Shang felt someone push him gently in his haziness. He opened his eyes slightly and saw that it was Hua Guzi standing beside the bed. He couldn't help but wake up and look at her with tears streaming down his face. Hua Guzi lowered her head and came closer to him and said with a smile, How can you be so infatuated? After saying that, she got on the bed and sat on in Sheng's lap, rubbing his temples with both hands. And Sheng felt as if a musky scent was blown into his head, passed through the bridge of his nose, and penetrated into the bone marrow of his body. After rubbing for a while, my head was covered with sweat, and gradually my limbs were soaked with sweat. Hua Guzi whispered, there are so many people in your house. It is inconvenient for me to live there. I will definitely come to see you in three days. He took out a few small round steamed cakes from the sleeves of his flowered coat, placed them on the bedside, and left quietly. At midnight, and Yayu's sweat had subsided and he wanted to eat. He touched the steamed cakes and tasted them. They were sweet and crispy. He didn't know what the fillings were, so he ate three. He covered the steamed cake with his clothes and fell asleep soundly. I didn't wake up until 8 or 9 in the morning, feeling relaxed all over. Three days later, after eating the steamed cakes, I became energetic. At night, Ensheng sent his family members to disperse. He was afraid that the lady-in-law would not be able to open the door when she came, so he secretly ran to the courtyard and unbolted the door. After a short time, Hua Yuzi came and said with a smile, you idiot! Don't you want to thank the doctor? And Sheng was so happy that he hugged her and slept with her, feeling extremely dear to her. Hua Guzi said, I came here at the risk of being accused of gossiping. Just to repay your great kindness. We can't get along for a hundred years. I hope you will make other plans soon. And Sheng pondered for a long time and then asked, I don't know each other. Where did I have contact with you? I really can't remember. Hua Guzi didn't answer. She just said, think about it yourself. And Sheng also asked Hua Guzi to formally marry him. Hua Guzi said, it's impossible to come here every day and night. It's impossible to get married. When In Sheng heard this, he couldn't help but feel sad. The flower girl said, you must get married. Then come to my house tomorrow night. And Sheng turned from sadness to joy and asked Hua Guzi, the road is so far away and your pair of delicate feet. How come you are here so quickly? Hua Guzi said, I never went home. The deaf mother in the east of the village, it's my aunt. I live in her house. If you delay until now, maybe the family will become suspicious. An Cheng slept with Hua Guzi and felt the fragrance everywhere on her skin and breath. He asked, What kind of spices did you smoke to make your bones and flesh smell fragrant? Hua Guzi said, I never smoke spices. I was born this way and was even more surprised. When Hua Guzi said goodbye the next morning, An Cheng was worried about getting lost again, so Hua Guzi agreed to wait for him at the intersection. As soon as it got dark, and Yayu ran away on horseback. As expected, Hua Guzi greeted him at the intersection, and they walked into Jiang's courtyard together. The old man and woman happily welcomed him in. There are no expensive wines and delicacies, and the farmer's meals are particularly delicious. When An Cheng went to bed at night, Hua Guzi didn't come over to see her, which made An Cheng very suspicious. 
It was late at night before Hua Yuzi came and said, My parents have been nagging you for a long time. The two became more affectionate. Hua Yuzi said to En Sheng, Tonight's party is like a hundred years of separation. En Sheng was surprised and asked why. Hua Yuzi said, My father is moving to a distant place because this small village is desolate and lonely. The happiness between you and me will come to an end after this night. And Sheng didn't want to break up, so he tossed and turned and sighed. The two of them were reluctant to leave. When the sky became bright, the old man suddenly broke in and cursed. You stinky girl, your innocent family has been tainted by you. It's so shameless to see anyone. Hua Yuzi turned pale in fright and hurriedly ran away. The old man also left, cursing as he walked. And Sheng was ashamed and scared, and he quickly sneaked back. And Yai returned home and couldn't sit down for several days. He was restless and in a difficult situation. I also wanted to go again at night. I jumped over the wall and went in, and I saw the opportunity. Since the old man said he was kind, even if he found out, he wouldn't condemn him. So he ran away at night, wandering around in the mountains, and got lost again. Then he became frightened. While looking for the way back, I saw a faint house in the valley, so I happily walked towards it. When I got closer, I saw that it was a large courtyard with a high gate, like a large family's house, but the gate was not closed. And Yayu stepped forward and knocked on the door to find out where the Zhang family lived. A maid came out and asked, who asked about the Zhang family in the middle of the night? And Sheng said, I am related to the Zhang family. I got lost and couldn't find it, the maid said. You don't need to ask about Zhang's family. This is her concubine's house. Hua Gu is here. Let me go and report to her. Not long after entering, she came out again and invited him into the courtyard. As soon as An Sheng climbed up the steps of the corridor, Hua Guzi came out quickly and said to the maid, An Lang must be exhausted after running around for most of the night. Please wait for the bed and let him rest. After a while, the two of them entered the palace hand in hand account, and asked, why is there no one else in Guzi's house? Hua Guzi said, Guzi went out and left me to look after the house for her. You just happened to come. Isn't it fate from the previous life? But as soon as An Sheng got close to this woman, a smelly smell went straight to my nose, and I felt suspicious. But the woman hugged his neck and suddenly stretched out her tongue to lick his nostrils, and Sheng suddenly felt pain like an all piercing his head. He was frightened and wanted to struggle to escape, but his body seemed to be tied up with a thick rope. In an instant, he fainted and lost consciousness. And Yayu didn't come home. And the family looked everywhere for him. Suddenly I heard someone say that they had seen him walking on the mountain road at dusk. His family found him in the mountain again and saw that he had died naked under the cliff. The family was surprised and couldn't figure out the reason, so they had to carry him back. The whole family was mourning round him. Suddenly, they saw a young woman wailing all the way from outside the gate and coming in to mourn. She lay on Anxing's body and cried loudly. Oh my God, my God, how can you be so stupid? Ah, she cried until her voice became hoarse. Only then did he hold back his tears and said to his family, don't be in a hurry to bury the body. Let the body be laid to rest for seven days. No one knew who she was. When they were about to ask her, she didn't answer and went out in tears. Her family tried to persuade her to stay, but she didn't even look back. Her family followed her out and disappeared without a trace. Everyone suspected that she was a deity descended from the earth and hurriedly followed her instructions. She came again at night, crying as before. On the seventh night, and Yayu suddenly woke up, turned over, and started moaning. Everyone in the family was startled. At this time, the woman came again, and when An Cheng saw it, she was a flower girl, she started to cry bitterly, and An Cheng rode and asked everyone to leave. Hua Yuzi took out a handful of grass, boiled a liter of medicinal soup, and drank it on the bedside for An Cheng. After a while, he was able to speak. He sighed and said, You were the one who killed me, and you were the one who saved me. Then he recounted what happened that night. Hua Yuzi said, this is the snake spirit pretending to be me. The light you saw when you got lost last time was this thing. And Shang said, How can you bring people back to life? Are you really a god? Hua Yuzi said, 
I have wanted to tell you for a long time, but I was afraid of scaring you. Did you buy it from a hunter on Huashan Road five years ago? Will the next year be released? And Yayu thought, Yes, there is such a thing, Hua Yuzi said. That's my father. The last time he said great kindness. He was referring to this matter. You have been reincarnated that night in the West Village King's house. My father and I rushed to the King of Hell to complain, but at first the King of Hell did not accept it. Yes, my father proposed that he would ruin his Taoist practice for many years and die for you. He begged for seven days before he got the answer. It is really lucky that we can see each other today. But even if you survive, you will definitely be paralyzed. You must get a snake, mix blood with wine and drink it, and the disease will be cured. When Ansheng heard this, he gritted his teeth with hatred and worried that he would not be able to catch the snake. Hua Yuzi said, This is not difficult. But killing too many lives will prevent me from attaining enlightenment and ascending to heaven for a hundred years. The snake cave is under the old cliff of Huashan Mountain. You can pile thatch and burn it afternoon. And then prepare a strong force outside the cave. Be careful with your bow, and you will surely catch this monster. After that, he sighed and said, it's really sad that I can't accompany you all my life, but I have lost 7 points of my 10% career for you. Please forgive me, in the past month, I have often felt sick in my stomach. If it moves slightly, it must have planted evil roots. Whether it is a man or a woman, I will definitely send it to you in a year. As he spoke, he shed tears again and said goodbye. When Njiyu woke up one night, he felt that the lower half of his body was dead. He scratched it with his hands and found no pain. So he told his family what Waguzi said. The family members followed the instructions and went to the entrance of the snake cave under the old cliff of Huashan Mountain to light a fire. Sure enough, a big white snake came out of the thick smoke, and the family members shot it to death with arrows. After the fire was extinguished, they went into the cave and saw that hundreds of snakes, large and small, were also burnt. The family members carried the dead snake home and boiled the snake's blood for Inyayu to drink. After taking it for three days, my legs gradually became able to move, and after half a year I was able to get out of bed and walk. Later, Inyayu went to Huashan alone because he missed Hua Yuzi. He met Mrs. Zhang in the valley, held a swaddled baby in her arms, and handed it to him, and said, My daughter sends her greetings and greetings to you. Just when Inyayu wanted to inquire about Hua Yuzi, the old woman disappeared in the blink of an eye. Inyayu opened the quilt and saw that it was a boy. He hurriedly took him home and raised him. He never married again in his life. Alright, this story has come to an end. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you.